Welcome to another episode of How to Do Character Voices with a Beginner Player. Today, we're going to be voice acting a kobold. Now, kobolds are short, little dragon-like creatures that basically hate anything that's taller than them. As monsters, they are very good at setting traps and just being clever and an absolute menace and nuisance to the party. So if you are playing one, then you should be striving to do the same to your DM, finding really obtuse ways to solve problems. We're going to construct the voice piece by piece through four basic elements. And when it's done, it's going to sound a bit like this. Me, hungry, need food, need meat, how did I need some spear, point, good, stab, nah. In most of my voice acting videos, I go through four just really simple steps um, that you can kind of use to construct a unique character. The first step is how fast does your character talk? So if your character talks really, really fast, then that changes how their personality is going to sound. We are 100% going to do very fast for a kobold. It's a small, short little creature, and it just feels fun if you say words way shorter than you need to. And truly, no party is complete unless you have a character that no one can understand. So for your kobold, the first thing we're going to be doing is talking really fast and saying things short and abruptly. And then the second element is pitch. So we're going to be doing that same thing, talking really fast, but in, hey, hi, pitch, really up here, mm, fast, fast. And then the third element is uh, how much air essentially is going, is your, is, is your throat allowing to come out into the voice. So uh, you can make it constricted. So it's kind of like, get out of here, kid, you're in the wrong part of town. Or really breathy. Oh, woe is me. Oh, bother. For your kobold, you kind of want to constrict it. And the reason why is that constricted sound is going to make it sound just a little bit more draconic or uh, monster-like. It is a monstrous creature. So, do the first thing, talk really fast, and then, in, hey, hi, bitch, and then constrict it. Ah, talk really fast, mm, in, hey, mm, ah, hi, mm, bitch, ah, find, mm, it, meat. And then the loudness. I've already been doing it, but I've been making this voice incredibly loud. It's a hard voice to do, talking so quickly and abruptly. You could maybe try to do it quieter. Um, talking really fast, and he's me, be more mm, soft, mm, spoken, uh, find, oh, 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 scary, scary, mm, don't go there. My kobolds, when I run them, it's the type of player character or NPC that everyone else at the table wants to kill, just from the voice. It is loud and obnoxious, and <laughs> if... <laughs> If you're a player, you may want to uh, tone it down just a little bit so that you're, if you're like playing in an apartment or whatever, you're not waking up your neighbors. But if you have the ample room and the party that will totally goof around with it, then it's, it's a very fun voice to bring out. So <clears throat> altogether, you kind of bring it to this. Need more meat, so hungry, long live the dragon. You can change uh, how the character will work, uh, sort of tweaking the those four knobs, like how fast does it talk, what's the pitch, what's the breathiness. So like the same voice with a much slower uh, talking speed might sound a bit like this. I need meat. The same voice with a lower pitch might sound a bit like this. I need meat. I'm so hungry. I need food. And then your breathiness. You could try to make it less constricted and a bit more breathy. I need a meat. I'm not fear. Run, don't hide. And then your loudness. Of course, you could make it soft and quiet. I am no threat to you. And then you can do the opposite. I need meat. All said and done, that's generally how the voice is going to sound. And I'm going to let my neighbors walk by here and totally creep them out as I'm doing this voice in my car. And um, I'm going to do just a quick impression here and just kind of go wherever this takes me. I need food. Shiny. You give me shiny and you give me food or you not pass. Meat dragon name cool thing. Become pet. Become strong. He give me meat. I fight. 
protect. Gold! 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 Shiny! If your DM does not destroy your character within three sessions, then congratulations. To finish off this episode, I'm going to tell a short story from the last campaign that we had a kobold in. Now, for context, this was a airship campaign set in the Plain of Air. The party had started off in a large city called Sky Haven that floated through the sky, and there was some calamity, and the city breaks apart, and the party is forced to escape on an airship. As they were leaving, they pick up this NPC that they found along the way, who was an invisible kobold. The party hated yet loved the kobold for his obnoxious voice. Ah, feed me! Of course, it being a small, obnoxious NPC, the party absolutely tortured it. They dusted it with flour so that it couldn't benefit from invisibility and run away. And then they proceeded to make a baby carrier for it and latch it onto the bugbear who carried it most everywhere he went, even into combat. The small kobold was very unhappy with everything, and this set the stage for what was to come. Not only did the kobold get carried around in a baby carrier, the Warforge decided at one point that he could store the kobold safely inside his chest. The kobold was then stuffed inside this Warforge, and a fight between the party broke out as the bugbear demanded to have his pet uh, kobold back. All of the shenanigans continued until the party landed at an unexplored island. The island was thick with mist and fog, and there were ruins all about. The party ventures into the ruins and discovers slimes crawling about in the fog. Seemingly ignored by the creatures, they decide to delve deeper and explore these hidden ruins. They go through vast passageways, and after fighting through a couple of gelatinous cubes, the party finds themselves heading down the stairs into a room with glowing green light. There, sitting in the center of the room, in a test tube with green liquid, is a zombified beholder. The party begins to explore the room, and as this is happening, the party is unaware of the intellect devourers that have rolled incredibly high stealth checks and are crawling around the ceiling. I would have them roll intelligence checks. And for those who failed, they would suddenly feel this crushing and terrible headache. At first, they considered that there could have been something in the room that was poisonous. Until it continued and continued, one of the party decides to look around. They roll a decent perception check and we see crawling along the ceiling is a particularly disgusting mass of brain and limbs. One of the party has a wailing hook that he hooks the intellect devourer off the ceiling and just demolishes it. As the party is fighting the other intellect devourer, they notice a blue mist beginning to fill the room. It dances and swirls with a haze like looking out in a hot desert. Things begin to twist and swirl. One of the party asks, I'd like to examine the beholder. He notices a single eye stalk snap open and look directly back at him. The party begins to panic. Much to a DM's surprise, as is always the case, I hear from one of the players, I grab my javelin and throw it at the test tube. Of course, this was completely unexpected and made the encounter two times harder. It immediately brought the beholder into combat while the other intellect devourer was still a problem. To make matters even worse, as the beholder begins to rise from the floor and roar and growl, they hear a voice from the entrance. Ah! Green slime thing coming downstairs! The invisible kobold had tailed with the party and was trying to escape the room when he noticed a gelatinous cube coming down the stairs. The invisible kobold was now hiding and hunkering by the entryway, trying not to be eaten by this ooze that was blocking the party's exit. I had planned that the floor would open up, the party would escape through the floor, and then they would run from the beholder. This was not the case. I hear, I grab my whale spear and throw it at the beholder, crit. The beholder tries to resist, crit fail. I pull the beholder towards the party, crit. The beholder is flung 40 feet through the air as the artificer with power armor and the raging barbarian yank it like a balloon on a stick directly into the gelatinous cube that was coming down the stairs. 
As the zombie beholder is being flung to its death, it makes one last desperate attack, and it's at that moment, as the beholder is being flung into the ooze, that I realize the kobold is still standing in the doorway. Dexterity saving throw. Two. They hear a scream. Ah! One of the players on his turn decides to use a spell called Lightning Lure. The kobold had about 10 HP and had already taken damage. Lightning Lure pulls a creature 10 feet closer to you. Roll to hit. I crit. The kobold is nearly instantly killed as a lightning lasso grabs him around the ankle and flings him somewhere into the rest of the cave as his body falls limp invisibly. I begin to roll death saving throws. At this point, the party pommels the beholder, killing it in a single turn, and then does the same to the gelatinous cube the next turn. The floor opens up that they were meant to escape from, and they begin to explore the catacombs. Before the session, I rolled from a random table I found on the internet for magical artifacts. 99. Legendary Magical Artifact. I roll for the Magical Artifact. Gren Shinnabon from the Legend of Drizzt series. Wonderful. Gren Shinnabon is a sentient evil crystal that is indestructible and inhabited by 14 evil wizards and a king. The artifact can control monsters under CR3 from 5 miles away. It does so on its own will and it can also raise indestructible crystal towers 60 feet into the air. Given the fact that the artifact can control creatures from very far away, it is also assumable that the artifact has a form of telepathy. The artifact can sense creatures of evil alignment, and it looks specifically for those. It is incredibly intelligent, though it is a very manipulative artifact and will use anyone holding it to its own ends. The Warforge was a player, of course, that tried to stuff the kobold into his chest and had done various other questionable things up to this point. The Warforged also was complaining about not having magical artifacts. He was the perfect host. The artifact begins to call to him, tempting him to come away from the party and find its resting place. But keep it secret. Keep it safe. The Warforged runs ahead. The party is left exploring, and the Warforged is first to enter the room, where he finds three dead illithid on the ground. In the center of these illithid was Gren Shinnabon, a glowing crystal that was calling out to him, whispering things like, I will give you power beyond your imagination. Join us in our crusade. Sure, sounds cool. He grabs the artifact and puts it inside his chest. None of the other players notice. The rest of the party continue to explore the catacombs. We have a near-death experience as a Mind Flayer tadpole jumps onto a player's face and skitters behind his eye. Another player thankfully crits a dexterity check and they yank it out, uh, burning his face in the process and almost killing him within one HP of dying from massive damage. The party, being distracted by the near-player death, failed to notice the Warforged, who was now running off ahead of the party and leaving towards the docked airship without them. The artifact is calling out to him. Yes, join me in my crusade. Leave your feeble party. We will grow in power. The Warforged looks at it. No, I'm not really interested, and tosses the artifact onto the ground somewhere. After the party left... I yelled at the top of my lungs. The party was startled, and I did not tell them what was happening. As a DM, I realized in that instant that the last sentient creature for Gren Shinnabon to inhabit on this small floating island was an unconscious, angry, kobold left to die and betrayed by the party. I begin laughing hysterically. We end the session with this. As the storm crests over the island, rain pouring down, there is one, one thing the party forgot. The silhouette of a small kobold is coated in the rain. Lightning flashes behind him. You left me to die! Now I'm coming for you! The party is exploring and going through various shenanigans, this party being very much chaotic neutral in all aspects. They see a merchant ship on the horizon. I want to raid it! The merchant ship sees your hostility and goes beneath the clouds. The party continues on. It is at this point they meet the genie. I am a most noble genie. I can grant you wishes three, but I have already granted my mighty wishes to another who has passed by earlier. 
The party is disappointed, and it was a very comical and jovial encounter. They consider attacking the genie because they are upset that he did not grant them any wishes. As a DM, the story that had happened was that the genie had passed by the kobold, and the kobold made three wishes. I want revenge! I want power! And I want... Uh, and I want a legendary artifact! I roll magical loot. The kobold gets dark armor, tattered with a black cape that allows him to fly. He has Gren Shinnabon in his left hand and can control flying sharks and evil monsters. He begins to plot his revenge, and for the final thing, a powerful magical artifact. I roll a magical loot from the same table that rolled Gren Shinnabon. 99, a deck of many things. The party at this point is unaware of the menace that is approaching them from behind. The dark kobold knight bent on vengeance and violence against those who left him to die. They continue exploring this new island, finding various pieces of loot, when they spot something on the horizon. The party sees in the distance a swarm of flying sharks and at the headmost shark, a hulking behemoth of a monster with glaring white teeth, there he stands, wearing pitch black armor, with a black cape that tatters in the wind. Behind him, lightning crashes, and with a flash of light, his silhouette appears. Did you forget something? You left me to die! I'm here, and I'm strong! The kobold has a AC of 23. He's got incredible armor, now he has levels in Warlock and access to the shield spell, and he has an enchanted shield to top it all off. He gets within range of the Barbarian, who, with the same spear that yoinked the Beholder on a stick, gets first in initiative. I would like to throw my spear at the kobold and yoink him to the party. <laughs> Crit. He instantly kills my kobold on the crit, dealing insane amounts of damage and nearly max rolling every dice. The kobold is dead. There were many, many more shenanigans with the deck of many things. It did not end nearly there. However, that whole encounter was very memorable, and it is something that I absolutely never would have planned. Yet it turned out so much better than anything that I had planned. And it's just another reminder of how wacky and fun Dungeons & Dragons can be. Thank you for listening, and remember, as you go out there and play your character or your NPC, it doesn't have to be perfect. Players will always appreciate the effort, and as long as it's silly, that's what matters.